All right, so what happens when you do 100 push-ups every day for 30 days straight? You want to know? Yeah. <laughs> Get good at it. Get pretty good yeah. at push-ups. You know, this is a good, I should hope. This is a good discussion because uh, this is a, a thought process by some people. And uh, this used to be a recommendation for fitness. I think it's not really a recommendation anymore, but I remember, who was it that Herschel Walker? Didn't Herschel oh. Walker do... Like so many push ups, so many sit ups. That sounds so many, right. You know, every it's, single day type of deal. It's probably a football player. I know. Britney Spears did sit ups. Like did that. she every yeah, day? Yeah, yeah. That was her big claim to fame. <laughs> you know, I love Britney Spears. I do. Way it's too much. Pop culture. It's all Britney. <laughs> yes, no, so uh, the, the daily, uh, first off, okay, if you can't do 100 push ups, um, or 100 push ups is like, like an insane amount for you, it's probably too much. To start with. So I wouldn't start with 100 push-ups and try and do that every single day. However... Well, if you broke it up in 10 mm -hmm. if, yeah, in if you, 20s. If, yeah, I was going to say, if you could kind of break it up um, and not go too intensely and you, and you did them every day, the first thing that would happen, you said it, Adam, is you would get really good. Yeah. Like, this is one of the fastest way to get stronger and better at a particular lift or a particular skill is to simply yeah. practice it every day. And then the, the, the second part of that is to practice it in small bites throughout the day. I you can do this with any exercise. Yeah, I mean, we, exercise. we recommend this all the time when it comes to pull-ups, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people, out, That's probably one of the most common exercises that people struggle to even get a mm -hmm. couple reps in. And so if you want to get good at pull-ups, you jump up, you do one. And then you later on the day, jump up, get another one, jump up and just do that all day long every day. And you'll get good at pull-ups. I guess the thing when I see stuff like this, um, and I know, I know it gets a lot of attention for whatever reason, it really depends on my client's goal. Like if my client said like, Adam, I just, I really want to get good at pushups or, you know, my brother challenged me to a, a pushup competition. Like, yeah. okay, here's the, here's the path. This is what yeah. we're doing. We're going to do it every day. We're going to do it like this. Um, but do I think that's the best way to build a chest? No, it's not like a mass builder. No, it's no. like, so, so I guess I would want to know from the client that is curious about this or the people that like, that click these viral videos and want to know about it is like, well, a good trainer would, before he advises doing 100 push-ups a day for a month, would say, well, what is it you want to obtain mm -hmm, from this? Mm -hmm. what, what are you looking for? Uh, because there's, uh, there's other paths to building a chest, for sure, than 100 push-ups a day. Well, and not to mention, too, with these like really high number, uh, like 100 rep type exercises, like I just worry about the slop and, and the form and mm -hmm. it, it just being so fatigue-based initially because the thought process, I have to grind my way through to get that 100 number mark. When what you talked about earlier about splitting it up and like, you know, really paying attention to your form and your technique and um, slowing it down even like I think that that would be a much more sound approach to it to, to get really yeah, good and strong. That's the key here. The key with practicing an exercise or a lift daily Quality reps is to not is to train at below high intensity levels is to practice the lift or practice the exercise. Some intensity is okay, but if, if you want to get away with doing something every day, doing it super hard is a great way to not be able to do that. Like if you hammer yourself with push-ups every day, you're going to overtrain in a hurry, cause injuries, not progress. But let's say you did, let's say you picked up this goal. You're like, okay, I'm going to do hundred push-ups every day. And if I really, if I tried to do as many push-ups as I could at one sitting, I could do 50. All right. So how should I break this up? Should I do two sets of 50? No, 10 sets of 10. If you did 10 push-ups 10 times a day, yeah. Yeah. you would get strong and you would improve your skill in the push-up very rapidly. Now take that approach and apply it to almost any other exercise. And this is this is great. For people who have a home gym, by the way, this is a hack. Like if you had a home gym and if you went out to that home gym five times a day and spent 10 minutes practicing an exercise and it was at sub-maximal intensity, it was like at moderate intensity at best, you would see some incredible gains. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why a lot of people don't do this is because it's uh, it just it's not plausible for most people's schedules. They can't go out and do ten minutes five times a day or something like that. Most people work better with a like, maybe a, that's why this push up one's so popular, Sal, is because mm -hmm. the, it is the most plausible for all people. Yeah, right. Like you don't need a gym, you don't need anything. You just you drop really, down, you just and, drop down and you can get ten push ups. And so it's probably of all the exercises that we've talked about, it is for sure without even thinking. I mean. Uh, you could do body weight squats, but you're not going to be able to mm -hmm. do uh, loaded squats without having a rack or a, a tool, 
where push-ups, you could literally drop down and do that and get really... Did you see the stat on Herschel Walker? Yeah, such a, such a random thing that you remember that. <laughs> yeah, I remember wow. specifically... A thousand because, a day. Yeah, I remember it specifically That's because... Uh, I don't know why I didn't check my Britney Spears fact that I dropped. <laughs> there, so. Kind of biased there, <laughs> per usual. No, well, well, Herschel Walker, by the way, is one of the fittest, most incredible athletes of all time. And then... As a forty-eight-year-old man, I think competed in MMA. I watched yeah. his. I watched. I think it was his first MMA fight. I believe it was here in San Jose. Yeah, it was. Okay, yeah, I was there. Like I wasn't sure strike, if it was his very first strike, strike force, force. Right. It was. Yeah, yeah. So. Was it Strike Force or it was, was it the, the other one? Uh, no, it was Strike Force. Was it Strike Force? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It was at. The, I was at San Jose. I was there. Um, yeah, and he was like mid to late forties at the time. Forty-eight. Or, I think. It was yeah, 48. yeah. It was like late late forties yeah. at the time. It looked. Yeah. He came out. He looked phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. He was <laughs> but, the specimen. But this whole this whole concept of doing. Um, you know, an exercise. She's, uh, Brittany only did 500 a day oh, okay, or up to a thousand on wow. a really good day. She lies though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't believe her. Yeah. 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 Pretty impressive though. I mean, Brittany Spears, Herschel Walker. If it was true, yeah. I don't believe her. You don't believe her? No. I believe her. No, I don't think she's, yeah. she's prone to lying. <laughs> <laughs> she danced good. She did. Listen, yeah. I, it, when you, this concept is not a new concept. Okay. The, the Soviets did this for a long time with their athletes, especially their strength athletes. Uh, you see people in prison, practicing these types of things where they're, you know, working Convict out all day, yeah. but they're not like beating themselves up every time. They're just working out frequently. Yeah. This frequent approach to training at sub maximal intensities, if you're relatively fit you and you practice this, oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's actually pretty amazing. I've experimented with all day workouts and I was amazed at um, how incredible they are. It's just, it's just not feasible for most people to be able to do something like that uh, all day long. But like I had a friend once that he did this throughout the summer. Um, it was like every, I don't remember what it was like every hour he was home, he would either do push-ups, some pull-ups or some, or some body weight squats. And so yeah. all day long he was doing one or the other. And I mean, I was, it was pretty amazing how, how fit he got just from doing that, that, that frequency model, it doesn't send a huge, by the way, you know, doing 10 push-ups uh, 10 times in a day, it, you're not sending a loud muscle building signal but you are sending a muscle building signal. And because it's so frequent, there's this add up, it, it's cumulative. And so I do believe that um, there's some, something to, to, to take note of, um, you know, and, and again, if you have a lift that you're not good at, I've seen many people apply this to different exercises mm -hmm. and seen them. There was a squat everyday routine that was popular in social media for a while yeah. well, before social media. Um, uh, this one forums were popular. And people were just remarking how strong they were getting their squat. I mean, like, I, you're practicing th squats every day. I, th this just highlights the analogy that you've given on the podcast so many times, and I've repeated so many times because I just think it's so good. Like uh, the whole speaker and amplifier uh, analogy. Yeah, that muscle you always, and central nervous system. Yeah, and I just think that we we overlook the importance of the CNS portion of it, yep. and like I think that. Which is so crazy to me because if anybody who's ever purchased like a nice speaker sound system setup, like you would never neglect the amplifier. <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's as it, the speakers are important and you want badass high end big speakers if you want the best sound, but you would never do that and then not put any effort or mm -hmm. energy towards investing in a amplifier you that's top notch to, to power that. Yep. And to me, I think that just it's it, it it says a lot about like the way we approach training, where we, we we get so focused on the muscle, the hypertrophy, the way it looks in the mirror, and we tend to neglect sometimes the communication around the amplifier to those speakers, which is the central nervous system, and like how important actually training adaptation towards that and improving that how much bigger bang you get for your buck oh, yeah. um, in the pursuit my, of strength, health, and fitness. My favorite real life example of, of, of this kind of like sub maximal intensity, frequent, you know, kind of muscle stimulation is uh, blue collar workers, blue collar workers. If you look at the muscles that correspond to their, uh, their job or their work, they're incredibly strong and incredibly conditioned. Like you go work with somebody who swings a hammer and go test their forearm strength and stability. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and stamina. In fact, they have very much, oftentimes you, you work with a construction worker who swings a hammer there. This is common forearm is bigger than their upper arm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. they, like they look like Popeye. My, like, st my stepdad was like, that. you'll never, and they're not lifting weights. You'll never shake the hand of a contractor uh, or a plumber and they have dainty hands. No, <laughs> it's no. Just, it doesn't. And they're not going to Or they're failure. really bad at their craft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That would be a sign right yeah, there. Like, have a lip you, you are not the man with, for the yeah. job. If you got no. dainty hands and they're not <laughs> lifting weights, they're not going to failure. They're not getting no, a crazy no. pump. They're just all day long. They're using these muscles. 
and it does have there is a there is something to take note of. This is why I, I designed the trigger sessions of Maps Anabolic that people tend to skip because it doesn't look like traditional strength training. But there's something there. So that's I think you know if you're if you've got some fitness and some experience, yeah. Like you can experiment with this. Now you will have to reduce the volume of your traditional training or stop your traditional training to practice this. But it's pretty interesting. It's a very interesting Grease effect. Grease in the groove, right? It's a it's very interesting effect. You know, there's a, there's another factor to that that I find interesting, or at least I find more interesting now that in my 40s, uh, and I I was definitely the kid that if I bought Maps Anabolic in my 20s and I saw the programming and I saw trigger sessions, I'm skipping. Yeah, I just know myself, yep. and I would be oh, I'll just I'll do the main stuff. That's right. Stuff that really moves. Yeah, I'm not going to do the band. I would. Stuff in yes, I wouldn't. And it's so funny because now being older now, there, you know how often I can get away with just doing some trigger sessions and not doing a, yep, like a foundational yep, day yep. and like keep my muscle mass. Like it's yeah. so there's something to be said about what it does to promote growth and build strength. And then even just to maintain it, we know what the studies say as far as how much volume and intensity you need in order to maintain. Yeah. I mean, if you've done years and years of strength training and you've built a physique at one point in your life, uh, man, to maintain it with like trigger sessions, yeah, you can crazy. make it recovery focused. I mean, that's really what we're doing is is this active recovery where you're sending that signal, but it's a lower uh, intensity signal, lower volume signal, but yep. you're still stimulating the muscle, uh, and it, it's it's a lot more likely that you're going to recover faster. Yeah, and there's an old Soviet training method too that you, uh, like they they communicate it with squats they'll say something like let's say you could squat uh 200 pounds for 15 reps well then what you do is you get into the bar and you squat it 10 times uh for five sets every day mm -hmm. no matter how strong you feel yeah, you don't go to you just do eight to ten reps every day and then 45 days later or 60 days later then you go test your max out and then all of a sudden you see this huge and it's and so what ends up happening is you 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 do the ten reps. It's like easy and you know, ten reps easy. Like man, I think I could do more, but you just stick to it. You just stick to it. Mm -hmm. And then forty five days later or so, you add the weight up. Let's see what my max is, and boom, thirty pounds added to your to your lift. Oh, really wow. interesting. Anyway, speaking of aging athletes, because we were looking at Hers Herschel Walker. Oh yeah. So Tyson, Ugh. right? Ugh. Fought. You know, Bro, it was so sad to watch. Yeah, that. but you know what? It's, it's, this is first off. This points to how effective the hype machine is. Oh, that yeah, people. Yeah completely like he's 31 years older yeah. than his opponent so when when what's his name was born tyson was 31 past his prime yeah when he was born <laughs> and and he gets to the ring at 58 it's almost 60 years old but dude, like, the love for tyson is what sold that whole fight it is dude and, and, we, and we love mike tyson and in his youth he was like he was a, a beast but 58 by the way you put him in the ring with any 58 year old he'll kill him right but I mean, it's it just people I, got I, sold I, on the on the on the hype. I you know? I I wasn't. I no. I watched the fight to watch the girls fight before. I had watched their previous fight. It was one of the best fights I'd yeah. ever seen. I told my family. Our whole family was together, was congregated for our birthdays because it was on that day. We were celebrating. We had the fights up, and I left right before. Katrina, I mean, right before uh, Tyson. Tyson's fight, and everybody's like, "You're leaving for this?" I'm like, "I already know what it's gonna look like." Yeah. And I got home in time to still catch it, and so I and I put it on, and like. The first round, I will admit, I, I sat up in my chair and I went, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Is this going to... And then right after that first exchanges, round... Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Because he came out with this flurry. Well, uh, he had his legs in the very first round. Yeah. But then and then after gone. that, it was exactly what I thought it would be, which is this like respectful sparring session that Jake put on with him. Yeah. And, you know, there was always that... Tyson, oh, if, if Jake leaves his hands down, could catch him with something like that. And you had that that feeling of maybe this would happen. But after watching the whole thing, I was like, oh, this was just a, a payday for, yeah. for Tyson. And I I mean, we knew that they were friends going into it. Yep. They were like, they like he's he, Tyson has said nothing but respectful things for Jake. I really think that this was a conversation outside, <clears throat> uh, you know, podcasting media stuff where it was, hey, bro, I tell you what, let's let's create this super fight uh -huh. and I'll get you paid. I'll get paid and we'll, we'll dramatize it. We'll build it all up. And I mean, Jake even alluded to the, uh, the girls that fought as being going to be the most exciting fight of the night. Yeah. He said that even before they fought. And I was like, not only that, it's like, if you watched Tyson and Roy Jones jr, which actually happened in 2020 with to, to like, nobody watched it really, but it was just sloppy. It was, you know, and it was like, I just didn't feel like that that same kind of like fast twitch no. Tyson existed anymore. Yeah. And so it was like, I just, I, I knew it was just kind of like a sham. When you talk to coaches, like boxing coaches, uh, like this is like, um, like 
traditionally what they say is that as you age, the first thing to go is your agility, yeah, your speed, and your power is the last thing. Your to, power to is still, yeah, main. Stamina, maintains. right? But agility is the first thing. And it's they typically talk about the legs, which we witnessed, you know. But again, he's 58, everybody. Like, I know. That makes a huge difference. And he's still amazing for a 58-year-old. Totally. Yeah. To, uh, his he, training lean up to insane. And he looks incredible. Well, I mean, that, that 30 seconds... Uh, of the first round would have killed a normal man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Jake is still an athlete and That's he's still, right. yeah, good so, enough to defend himself and stay away from that. He's if one of us prime. stood in that ring for one minute no. with him, we would have no, got I, knocked out for sure. Him. No way I was yeah, trying to throw yeah, punches yeah. with that guy. You know, but totally. I think what's probably most interesting is to the point you made, Sal, which is, I mean, it was over a couple of years now ago when we had this debate when I said this is the future of boxing yeah. and uh, as is as it is, right? Is Which is crazy. And even, even though... I said that when we were debating this, I do still find it fascinating that we are drawn to something like this, that it's almost like, you know, damn well, it's yeah. not going to be good yet. You can't look away. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I still wanted to watch it. You yeah. know what it is? Yeah. You, you, you know what this proves is that it's not about the fight, bro. It's about the hype. Mm -hmm. It's never about, it's like the fight is how many times has the hype generated yeah. crazy revenue well yeah and fight. how many and how many times did you guys catch yeah. a random no-name fight that was one of the most amazing fights you ever no, seen you don't most of the time yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, this it's, was it's the no-namers that put on the show uh, yeah so it, it is it is interesting uh culture and how we we gravitate towards this type of stuff to but be what a testament though to tyson that he left such i don't know any boxer at 58 years old who would get as many people to bet that he would win yeah besides tyson well that's just how fierce he Foreman? was when he was in his how in his old was prime. he when he came back 40, 40 something yeah 40. oh he wasn't even in his 50s. no and oh, Foreman no, no, wasn't no, he was 48 for, yeah, 46. Foreman was Some a reason beast. I thought he was 50 no maybe okay. 46 maybe 46 but, yeah, I mean, look up was, Foreman it was, mid, it was mid to late 40s yeah. yeah which by the way that's about the end like if you're if you're a high level athlete and competing at high level in high level anything yeah if you're doing great in your mid 40s you are an anomaly that's about when the Absolutely. shit starts to yeah. you know yeah, hit you that's why up. Randy Couture in his mid forties, you know, competing was such a crazy thing. Yeah, Once you get right. to 50, 60, Tyson's two years away from being sixty. That's so crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's like, crazy. That was life expectancy not that long ago. Foreman right? was forty five. Forty five. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. He was our age. Man, I thought he yeah. was older. And everybody that. was like, "Oh my god, I yeah. can't believe." I mean, he. I couldn't. I can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine You'd being in a ring right out. now. I, like, I can't even Lord. finish a workout without <laughs> hurting myself, bro. <laughs> like fucking. <laughs> much like, and there ain't nobody punching me while I'm doing that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, are you lifting weights, eating a ton of food? and struggling. You're not packing on any muscle. You're not building any muscle at all. You're not getting stronger. Well, check it out. We have a hard gainer guide. This can be your ultimate resource to turn that around. Pack on some muscle mass with our hard gainer guide. It's totally free. You can get it by downloading it, clicking on the link in the description below. I can't uh, catch a break, dude. I tell you what, you know, I, uh, I don't think I told you this. Did I you hurt again? Listen, so. Oh, come on. You know, man. did you see that I had I had Kyle take me through uh, the rehab, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which was super intense, right, to do that, right? I, and, and, and needed. And afterward, I was like sweating. I was like, oh my God, that was like a, a, a challenging mobility session. And uh, and then, so yet last night, Katrina's, so Katrina's been really getting in and working working all, uh, working me out and stuff like that, all my knots and everything like that. So I'm, I'm doing all the things right now, like all the things I can. And last night she gets down to, to start working my legs and she's like, Oh my God, your your you know your leg is all bruised and swollen, right? I went, Oh, are you kidding me right now? She goes, No, no, it's I can she's like, I can see it in the dark. Turn on the lights. And so I got up, turned the lights, whole back of my hamstrings all fucking all black and blue. Black and blue lit up. And so I'm like, motherfucker. So when I originally did the injury and I said I just probably just got a little strain, yeah. I only had about a quarter size bruising but it's spread but it's now spread yeah. and and obviously when i went through that the i just the isometric contractions were enough to cause that oh. and so i'm definitely gonna have to just like completely lay off of it for too long. soon yeah too soon that's all what was too soon but just so so disheartening and and frustrating i was like i i put this whole positive spin on like you know this will be good I'll, I'll take the audience through, you know, rehabbing it. And, mm -hmm. you know, even though it's kind of boring, I still think some people get value from it. I thought we did a great little, you know, session that we videoed and Kyle helped. And it was great too, because there was moments like, so I, descri I described to the audience that, 
you know, there's a, there's a reason why I want Kyle here. It's not that I can't do these movements by myself, but I want another professional eye yeah. who's watching it. And it was great because Kyle had a couple of times where he's just like, oh, drive that right hip in. And I do it. I went, oh, wow. You know, and like, yeah. so just it was a good opportunity to highlight to the audience of the intent of movements like that and, and, and rehabbing and why that's so important. You're laying the foundation for going forward. And I talked about how as a trainer, how many times I would get a client, you guys have had this happen to you. I know many times where, you know, nine years later they hire you and you're able to guess they had an injury because of their movement patterns. Yep, yep, right. Yep. And that's, and that's a big problem. That's a, has a lot to do with the way they rehab the injury. Definitely. Right. They, they Cause your kinda, body will learn to move around it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so I was highlighting that. So I think that part was all real good and, and, and was valuable to the audience, but then just so discouraging to, to do that and then come home and then find yeah. out that it's all still bruised. So I just got to lay off the legs for probably a couple of weeks. At least. It was about a week that I had laid off of it thinking that I was okay. But the fact that it's bruising up that bad. Tells yeah, you got to wait a little longer. Yeah. It's, Damn, I wonder it's, what kind of tear. Are you planning on getting any imaging just to make sure? No. I don't no. want the I don't want the bad news. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather <laughs> such a I'll guy just, thing. Yeah, I will. You go to the doctor. I'll just no. keep. Yeah, I'll, I'll just keep. I'll just. And I know there's people out His there. His leg's like, gonna oh. fall off. I yeah, know. I know. <laughs> Fuck it. I'll cut a leg off. Cool. <laughs> <say. laughs> is, I don't need both of them anyway. Do a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today's leg day. <laughs> leg. <laughs> leg. Literally. Uh, yeah, weird. dude. So. Oh, that's frustrating, dude. You know, I wanted to bring something since we're talking about me and my journey, and I'm tracking and doing all this stuff. So interesting, uh, and this is kind of a shout out to uh, Ned, one of our partners. Um, I wanted to ask you the difference because uh, I didn't really, I mean, I knew it was good, but I didn't realize the difference until this. So right now I'm obviously very regimented. I'm consistent with a lot of mm -hmm. my supplements uh, and, and tracking everything. And what happens, just being honest and transparent, it, we get so much supplements from mm -hmm. all different brands always sent to us that sometimes when like my favorite brand like ned i run out i just grab something from the back <laughs> and i'll just use whatever i got at the house because we have so many and so i you know I, i've already learned of a long time ago that the magnesium is night and day difference for me for mm -hmm. catch and sleep and so i've been using some and i don't want to throw shade on any other brands but i was using some other brands uh until my ned until I got my Ned, till our shipment came through, and then I, I picked up. And so a couple of weeks had gone by of using other magnesiums. And then the first night back of using Ned, I'd felt the difference yeah. in my sleep again. What is it in theirs that is, and I know they have a couple other things, and maybe it's that, is what is different about them than the than typical magnesium? So if you have a magnesium deficiency and you take magnesium, you'll notice uh, typically within 30 minutes to an hour, you'll just feel more calm. Um, and you'll just feel good. Not sleepy, but you'll feel like, oh, my body feels uh, pretty good, which you probably are always a little bit deficient. That's why you feel it so much. Yeah. They have GABA and theanine in there, which can help with the relaxation. But then they have three different types of magnesium. One of the issues with magnesium is its absorption, Threenate. your ability to absorb it. Mm. So they have bisglycinate in there, lactate, gluconate, um, aqua, uh, aquamin magnesium citrate. So Three different types of magnesium, all of them uh, will get used by different tissues um, or have a different um, absorption with different tissues. Uh, it's just, there. it's a very bioavailable uh, magnesium supplement. So I've heard the same thing from people who yeah. are like, oh, magnesium didn't do anything with me. Try this. And then they'll try and do it. goes through the difference. blood brain barrier, right? Yes. Yeah, some of them will cross the blood brain, brain barrier. Other are a little bit better for other tissues in the body. But the blend is what makes the difference. Uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Uh, you know, and I, I've Combo. been, I've been, you know, hyping them for ever yeah. since the day I tried them. It, it was a big difference for me. Um, but to me, this is always the neat thing I, I love about like what we do. And, and when you've been consistent with stuff is like, I always, the best test to me is when you go away from something and then you revisit again. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. it, and it wasn't intentional. It wasn't like I was testing this on purpose. It was just like, I literally ran out. I'm like, oh, I have these other uh, magnesium pills. I'll just keep taking those. And then I keep reminding myself, oh, I need to grab the net. I need to grab the net. Finally do it and then use it again. And then oh, lo and behold, all of a sudden I have this like magical night of sleep. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, interesting. I wonder I've had lots of messages like that of yeah. people who will first email the message and say, I already use magnesium. Didn't do anything for me. I'm like, try this. Makes a big difference, definitely. Yeah. They have another. They have another product called the De Stress, by the way. Yeah, which yeah, we, took we never that. talked about, and it's got um, ashwagandha in it as well, and it's got different cannabinoid blend in there for stress. Oh, different okay. than the sleep. Sleep will knock you out. We've talked about it before. <laughs> take don't take Ned sleep and drive. This is getting machinery. combo with caffeine. Put you to sleep. 
This is a good combo yeah. with caffeine. Very, yeah, very nice. I like, I like I'll it a lot. Try, I'll have to try that. Combination. Let me uh, pass that over. Speaking of me. working out and stuff, I'm going to need an intervention because... Oh, you've been needing one for a long I'm, time. I'm getting, oh, <laughs> I'm getting carried away, dude. <laughs> We're just now getting to this. Uh, okay. You know what I did? I dropped... <laughs> How do we mobilize I dropped... My gut health is good. So I got like the trifecta, right? Gut health is good. I switched to a lower volume style of training, which I'm reacting to really well. And I'm just growing, which I get carried away with. Um, and I need, I just need to slow it down. I told my wife, I'm like, we're going to change the diet. I got to bring my calories down because I'm getting just too, I'm too heavy. I'm like 220 something now, like 223. I'm so torn about this intervention. I've talked to Katrina many times about, uh, about talking to you, you about like your problem. Sell, don't you? Yeah. It's very, it's very good for the business. And so <laughs> I, 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 I talked to her, I'm like, Look you know, should I, tell, the guy should that can I talk breathe. to Sal about yeah. his problem or should I just let it keep going? And I was like, you know, there's a part of me that's like, he looks so good for the brand. I don't know but, if I want to do but, that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it would not probably good, serve man. him to stop working out a few it's days. It's not good, Stay dude. Jacked. Yeah, no, yeah. it's just, it's not feeling good. That's what it is. I don't, I don't feel, I could tell. I could tell. I was telling I, my wife. And my wife's like, maybe you should stop lifting weights. I was like, no, that's not going to happen. Let's try some other stuff. I mean, Excuse okay, so yeah. <laughs> now I know you know this because you're such a self aware person. So even you just saying that, I know you got to know that that's where the success resides is going straight towards what you just said. Yeah. Like, no, oh, I know. So are you even at a place where you're willing to test that? Yeah, I'm cut. So here's what I'm going to do. Kind of. No, yeah. Don't tell me what you're going to do. Yeah. I don't want to hear your fucking, yeah, your, your, My, your Jerry rigged version of what you should <laughs> be doing. Right. So let me, uh, patch it this way and justify. This is I how I, I reduce my, I think how I'm about you there. just take some time off, the, oh, oh, miss boy. some days. Don't do that. Why are you giving you, you know, my wife listens to the podcast. You know what you're just doing right now? I mean, she's you're right. Her, she's oh, right. Man. I mean, and I know, and you know what? I'm fit enough she's to carry, this, I'm fit enough to carry me. the brand for a little while. I'm saying so we can do this. We've always had this nice balance between the three of us. Like you, you probably need to get a little uh, softer right i'm getting now. closer i'm getting closer to what i what, the things i think i need to do i mean here's a this is my it's a good time my personal suggestion is to just allow it when it's advantageous because there's many times where you stress yourself out about working out and it's like bro we're on yeah. a work thing or we're doing this like just yeah, yeah. let it go that day yeah, 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 like yeah. why don't you just no then? that's that's not the you know what it, it's I, I i could here's the deal i could keep working out that's not the problem i'm getting better about about that it's that uh, if my gut health's good i'll feed myself and i get carried away with the gains i get carried away with the gains mm. i feel like, like it's all intertwined out. bro of course it is yeah i feel like it's, it's all intertwined, intertwined. of course it i is. mean i one of the one of the uh and i guess i didn't i've talked about it but because we we you and i have a lot in common with this stuff yeah. if it's we both were driven to to this space for the same way and probably one of the best things, one of, if not the best thing I ever did during my journey was the mobility thing. I know. It was a Changing big, the focus. Yeah, huh? it was very, very, and I, I, I didn't want to bring light to it because I didn't want to make a big deal about it to the sh on the show yeah. or to everybody else because I, I was like staying locked in myself. But there was definitely an inner struggle there of letting go of the jacked bodybuilder yeah, Adam guy and saying, I'm going to fully go all in on this mobility Gumby dude. And that, and part of what that means is I might look a little wiry and I'm not going to get the compliments and I'm going to feel insecure. Like, and it took a while. I wish I remember exactly when it kind of switched over for me, but it's really helped that, that process, but I had to go all in on that. I know. I couldn't you gotta, like, you got to move your focus. Yeah. Completely. I couldn't dabble. I couldn't be like what you're saying right now. I'll oh, just yeah. reduce a little bit of this. Cause then it would just still, yeah, it comes back. The, the, the best, the most success I ever had was when I did jujitsu. Cause that was all about yeah. jujitsu. It's just not plausible uh, with schedule and stuff like that. Um, you know, that's just not a plausible area to be consistent, but I think talking about it might help. And it does help me connect with, 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 callers when they call in they have body issue body image issues or addicted to exercise like i get it i get it yeah. i know how i know how to struggle <laughs> i manage than you know. mine more than you know i <laughs> manage it on a, on a regular basis sometimes better than others but well probably the hardest thing and i get it uh that and i love that you you're willing to communicate it because w one of the hardest things about uh, an addiction like this is that it serves you in so many ways I mean, it serves the business. Sure, uh, it serves your intelligence easy towards just, communicating. Easy justification. Yeah, very, right, right, very, right. very easy to justify that, and such a better addiction than so many other things. But nonetheless, <laughs> that's my argument. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> my the, wife's like, "Stop exercising. You want me to do heroin?" Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, it's um, way better. 
<laughs> but I mean, uh, but I, I I do think that there's there's got to be times where you find it it creates anxiety because you can't just let it go, right? Like, and there, there's some freedom yeah. in training that muscle, you know, as for an analogy, like of letting go yeah. because there are moments where it's just like, hey, this is probably one of those times like you just skip the workout. I'm bro. I think I'm getting there. I, you know, my spiritual practice is help is helping. It really is, and talking about it's really helping. And also, you know, you know, I'm getting the age now where. It's just uh, the, the the negative signs are just getting louder. They're mm -hmm. just getting louder. I haven't injured myself, um, but so it's not an injury thing. It's just comfort. I just, you know what I mean? It's just comfort. You know what it is? It's the workout. I love the workout, but that's like one hour out of my day, out of my life. Right. The rest of the day is, I can feel. Right. I can well, feel I, well I get the increase of calories. I mean, I've just literally over the past couple of weeks have felt like my gut health is like, you know, somewhat sustainable. It makes such a difference. I was like, oh my God, I'm like hungry again. I'm just eating like a ton. Um, but it, I just have found like finally a supplement that's worked. Mm. And, and it's, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to jinx it, but it's like so far, like the last Good. two weeks. Because you had like, stuff for a while. I was, I was. Dude, I was not, I was in a dark place. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was waking up, throwing up. Like I was up, wow. like stuff was coming up my throat. Yeah. Like I was not getting sleep, dude. Like just fighting it all the time. It didn't matter even what kind of food it was. Like, so it used to be just like some of the, you know, the, the common offenders and uh, gluten and stuff like that. But it was just like all across the board, any food, if I got, you know, a little bit over in terms of like, you know, a, a surplus of calories, it was like, yeah. Yeah. Now, is there, is there any connection, Justin, for you and anything like if, if all, if there's something that happens at home or work that causes like a headache for you, stresses you out, does it trigger it or does it change it differently? Is it like, does it just exacerbate it or is it the cause of it? Like, have you connected any of that stuff with that? When it, when I'm in it, it definitely aggravates it. Yeah. So stress aggravates it. Um, um, but it's know, anything. not. It's not necessarily the thing that sin, that That's makes not, it happen. Yeah, so like you could be like, home life's amazing, work is cruising, and then yeah. all of a sudden you have this this tummy shit happen, yep. and then but if then ha something happens, it exacerbates it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, it just so makes it worse. Um, but when I'm when I'm feeling good, like right now, it's like, it's it's a totally. I don't know, man. It's 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 a whole new world for me, dude. dude bro, like, I had gut issues for so long. It's so like to absorb nutrients is like life life changing. It is. It's just, just in a better mood, you know. I was like, man, I was kind of like crouchy, totally. and, you know, oh, just yeah. like an asshole to everybody like at home we for a while. Tell. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> just I kidding. was trying to hide it. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Do you want to improve your squat without injuries? Do you want to have a stronger squat? Do you want to have a deeper squat? We have a free how to squat like a pro guide. It's totally free. And you can get it right now in it. We describe details, exercises, techniques, and ways you can improve your squat so that you start to squat like a pro. You can get it for free right now if you click on the link in the description below. Hey, I was going to tell you, have you seen the UFO stuff that they're talking in, in Congress oh, and no. showing all Are you seeing all this stuff? No, but I did see Bro, a, live on video? Fox News. They had like their their reporting, and then in the background, like in the sky, there was all these weird... Um, <laughs> like flashes of light that were like leaving trails and then in and out. And Bro, they're, they're like, what is this? They're declassifying stuff like crazy right now. And apparently, have you seen the squid videos? Oh yeah. The, the little, it almost looks like a drone, but it's a squid. And it's like, of, it goes, it becomes invisible. Then it becomes visible and, and then they catch it on like infrared camera. These are like military uh, videos. And they're like, we don't know what this is. Bro, they look, it's not a squid. They call them squid, but it looks like a, some kind of a, flying vehicle with like like they look like tentacles hanging down yeah. and it's flying through doug you could pull up pull up squid ufo video bro it's weird it is all weird. this stuff coming out is hella weird yeah like what are they gonna drop soon i mean i, I, I just feel like we're in for like some weird times something <laughs> like why are they declassifying all this stuff right now know. you know yeah and and uh yeah yeah, I don't know. I want to see this. I I have this. You guys just reminded me of something I wanted to ask Justin because Justin's like the random animal fact person. Yeah, I got that. Some. I just, water buffalo. Uh, you know what much about, about water buffalo? Are you a water buffalo guy? Uh, at all? Sal, been, you know water buffalo. I know more I about mean, hippos. I think I know so, one of the most dangerous animals. In the world. So you know they actually like swim underwater. Underwater, like a, like know. an alligator. Is that why they're called water buffaloes? Yeah. Did, did you oh, know that? No. And that and you got to fact check it. this because I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was like, no fucking way. I saw first of all, I saw the video of them swimming, but then I heard the fact on it. 
They can swim up to 30 miles per hour underwater. Oh, that's 30 terrifying. miles an hour? Bro, that is That's fascinating. a big animal. Yeah. Yes. So you got to look that up. That's after gnarly. You that up because I saw that and I went, oh, I got to tell just Justin. That's, He's, a, that's wow. a terrifying- I'll have to see that video. Yeah, can you imagine just the horn? Look at that. Look, oh at, look at that. That's the, that's the squid. What? It's caught on infrared camera. What? That's at the, a U.S. military yeah, so you base. you can't even see it. And what? It, like the reappears. Fuck? And that was declassified. What in that the looks world? like right out of a movie? Well, that looks out of Star Wars for sure. Yeah, yeah. what is that? It looks like those things that uh, start. What are those called on Star Wars? Those those drone looking things. Yeah, they're the drones. Yeah, they're yeah. like. Uh, that was in 2018, and there's multiple videos of different Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, dude, had those. What is happening right yeah. now? That is what, and That's they're reporting on it. They're reporting on it. Yeah. So I don't know. So, okay, water buffalo. 30 miles per hour. Yeah, let's see. Wow. That's run. No, run. Oh, yeah, they can't so, swim that fast then. That's what I thought too. If they can run 30 miles an hour, Show there's no way they can finally, swim 30 yeah, miles no an hour. Yeah, there's no way, right? There's no way. So, I've, I mean, I have I think I remember that moose, they can actually walk on the bottom of like lakes and stuff. Like they, they go, they submerge all the way down. Yeah, I, I actually saw the video of it underwater, like completely yeah. submerged. I didn't even know what it was. I actually thought it was like a turtle. And then as it started to get closer to the top, you could see the horns. And I went, oh, shit, it's a water buffalo. That's crazy. That's funny you brought, you bring this up because I was uh, uh, just last night before bed at my talking to my my uh, you know four-year-old. Can't believe he's four now. But anyway, we're talking about predators and prey yeah. and the difference between um, like the way that they look. And so I explained the oh, eyes. The eyes uh, and stuff. Yeah, and, and, and like the defense mechanisms and all that stuff. And yeah, he's like uh. super... So super into it. I do have a little bit of an update. I told you guys about like this roaming mountain lion. Oh yeah, in our neighborhood, and uh, it was gone. And actually, we reported it, and then like the wildlife, I don't know, um, people were like we, we tagged them. I don't know what their official title is, uh, and so they were actually like stoked because they they um, lost contact with that specific animal, and um, they wanted to you know see see if they could like see all the trends with it but what's interesting is like a lot of animals in our area now they seem like they're coming through the neighborhoods and they're they're like looking for food now that it's getting cold i don't know if they're hungrier or what but like so that so the story is these two teachers like so i live near this high school and they were walking back to their cars and these kids were like, Hey, Hey, there's a mountain lion behind you. And like the teachers were like, ah, you know, stop messing with us. And they kind of made their way back to their car. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the next day they saw the reports of the mountain lion that was in the area and all that and put two and two together with the same day. It, it was like yards away from them. And, oh, wow. Yeah. And it's been roaming around the campus of the school. So now the school has to like, it's been oh like, my God. they think that it's actually had this, cause there's a, um, uh, there's actually like the storm drain there that, um, okay, this is, this is where it's like, I'm like, Oh my God, smack my face. Uh, Everett goes down there with his buddies and they make a little fort oh, out of this storm drain. And that's where it lives. We, they, they think great. It probably went there. <laughs> so he was there even yesterday. Like, you know, yeah. Like, I'm like, cool. You guys have, uh, you know, fun activity and you're like putting sticks and like making a fort out of it. Meanwhile, we find out later, like it, it was probably where it was resting in a den inside the storm drain. <laughs> no, and so they're trying to figure out, you know, how to like sort of, uh, create safety on campus because it's like still kind of out there roaming around. But we looked at, um, the sounds that a mountain lion makes. Cause I'm like, Okay, a mountain lion. I saw it in person. I'm like, it's it's a little intimidating, but it's not like scary or nothing. It's like, ooh, that's a majestic cat or whatever. And then I listen to the sounds it makes. Doug, did I send that to you? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's a lion, dude. dude it, it like <laughs> it's a lion. Yeah, like ima imagine oh. that's like right behind you, <sighs> like. <sighs> <laughs> I was like, Bro, that'll oh, fuck shit. you up so easily. Because we heard it too in the in our backyard, like through the trees. We heard some big, big rustling, and then started to hear like, a, and I was like, everybody inside. Oh my god! No, you. 
They'll kill you for sure. Yeah. yeah. You so. can't, you ain't going to do anything. <laughs> how, how heavy are they? 90 pounds, 120 pounds? Well, oh, way more than 90 pounds. Eight, are they? Oh, probably got it. Bro, a mountain lion is heavier uh, than 90 20, pounds, dog. Maybe. It depends. Yeah. Yes. I thought they were like 120 pounds. I feel like they're like above that. the I don't think they're that. that big. No, 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 no. They're so, more bro, more. a cat that's 120 pounds is like a. It, it's still it's 160, pure muscle. bro. 120 to 160. Yeah, there 120. You go. Female, to 75 to bro, 110. 90 and 160, just so you know, is almost double. Okay. That's a big difference. You know, I know, I know. I said it'll, 120 at one yeah. point, though. Okay. Yeah. How's It'll maul you easy, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even 120, the females are 110, right? That's, but I know yeah. some people are like, oh, I have a dog that's 150 pounds. A 150 it's not the same pound, thing. you know, cougar. It will, it's not the same, bro. They are fat. Have you ever seen them jump? Yeah. 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 It's not yeah. the same. Super at all. athletic yeah. and, and the fast. That's weird shit. that that's like in our backyard. Yeah. There, you know, it's weird on the news right now. You've been seeing all bunch of them all over the place. Arnold, where was another one? I've seen a family of them have been going. Yeah. They've been all over the news. It's pretty rare that they attack they're, somebody, though. I think it they're is. they're hungry. They're trying to get resources for winter, you know? Yeah, they normally get people's, and, like, sheep and cattle and stuff like that. Yeah, That's normally what they do. There was also another weird spotting, which was... Um, uh, it was uh, like had this weird tail. It was related to a raccoon, but it was I didn't even know these existed in California. Um, but it, ugh, fuck, I don't remember the name of it. The type of a cat? It, it was like a, almost looked like a marsupial, <laughs> mm. um, but it's related Lynx. to uh, I don't know. I'll, mm. I'll find the name later. Yeah, no idea. No yeah, idea. I don't, I don't know. It's cool. yeah, hey, speaking of my kid, I was telling the stories, and then uh, we're talking about predators, and he has this. We have this toy that's like a T-Rex toy. So it's, it's got a handle that I can make him open and close his mouth. And it's like a long, it's like one of those grabber toys. And so I'll tell him stories with it. And while I'm telling him stories and we're laughing, I'll pretend like I'm trying to, you know, bite his foot or something. He'll laugh or whatever. And I'm like, I'm going to eat your toe. And my kids and my son's like, you can't eat my toe. I'll die. And I'm like, <laughs> You'll die. If any part of me is removed, I'll die. And I'm like, well, what about your finger? And I'm making a, and he goes, don't you know, it's the golden rule. I'm like, what? Goes, it's the golden yes. rule. <laughs> don't, don't eat a piece of someone. It's the golden rule. I think you missed, you missed that part. Well, I was just going to, it's so funny you bring this up because I was going to ask you, because this has been happening a lot with Max and I know that your son's just behind him. I'm like, the, the, this just, every day, I, I got to get better, a, a, a commitment to the audience of like, when it happens of like writing it down you because yeah. he says stuff that's like, I, I came, I put him to bed yesterday night. And I come back and I'm laughing. Katrina's like, what are you laughing about? I'm like, he just hit me with a uh, pinky promise. I've never, I've never <laughs> I didn't teach him that. I've never even heard him say that before. And I was, I was putting him down for bed and I was just like, uh, he's like, daddy, I want to, I want to, I want to sleep with you. I said, no, 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 bro. You don't sleep with me. It's like, you, you sleep in your bed. You're, you're a big boy. Now you're five years old. You stay in your bed. So with that, he's like, yeah, but come on, daddy, come on. It's the weekend. This and that. I said, no, 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 no. I said, well, you, you need to sleep in your bed. I said, I tell you what, tomorrow's mommy's birthday. I said, you can come in early in the morning and you can climb in and then we'll wish her happy birthday. He's like, okay, before she wakes up? I said, yeah, before she wakes up, that's fine. But it's in the morning, not tonight, right? So I'm telling him that. He goes, okay, okay, you promise? I said, yeah. He goes, pinky promise? I'm like, how do you know what that is? Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, where did that come from? Is it like on a movie? Or? Yeah, I guess Katrina said they say they say it to him at school. They tell him that. There's another one that he does that, I, that was so, it's so cute. They teach him that, um, uh, like, uh, you fill my bucket it means like you fill oh. my heart. They have like a bucket there, and it's like something to do with like you know, like love and all sort yeah. of that. And so he, that's him saying that like you fill my heart is like you fill my that's bucket. Great. And so he'll say that like, oh, mommy, you fill my bucket, you yeah. know? Yeah. But no, Jessica does because we homeschool, right? So she she teaches lessons, and so she'll teach him things, and he'll use them sometimes incorrectly, but oftentimes correctly. Like I don't remember what happened, and we were oh we were wrestling. <laughs> And every time he thinks to jump on me, right? And that kid, he's, I swear, dude, he'll try and hit, like throw a knee at me or something. So I'm always like, listen, you can wrestle me, but don't Superman hit me. punch. Yeah, and he'll like throw things in, right? So when he does that, I'll hold him down, I'll tickle him. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll tickle him. And he mm -hmm. laughs, but then he's like, don't tickle me. But he's laughing, so I'm still doing it. And he gets up and he's mad. He's like, I'm not playing with you ever again because you did, you tickle me. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm sorry, buddy. I won't tickle you. And he was like, all right, I'll give you grace. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, okay. What's grace? grace? It's forgiving someone when they don't deserve it. I'm like, oh, cool. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 oh, ringtail cat. I'm like, all right, dude. It. Uh, all right. Anyway. <laughs> hey, so I got, I want to tell you guys, it's reminding me of a story. So this morning we had a meeting about our sponsorships that we're supposed to uh, mention today. One of them is Viore. And Viore does not have a Black Friday sale. That's a, that's a great <laughs> Terrible commercial. commercial. <laughs> but you know what it reminded me of? So, uh, and now I get this, like super high quality brands. Yeah, some brands are like this. Yeah. Viore is 
they're at that status, dude. They're at that status where they're super high quality, very, very desirable. They went, I mean, I remember when we first started working with them to now, they are now, I mean, what's their valuation now? It's like four, billions. Four or six billion. Like it's that. crazy. I think it's six billion. I think it was four before. I think it went up yeah, another two. Now we, have a up. now we have a discount code. You can get 20% off with us, which is the biggest code you'll get anywhere. That's, yeah. you, nobody will give you 20% yeah. off, which we got with them early on. Yeah, which yeah. is why they Grandfathered, allow us, yeah. They allow us to do that. But it reminded me of a story like years ago when I, when I was, the, my first marriage, I went to Tiffany's to buy uh, the engagement ring. And I was a young kid. And I remember going in there thinking I would wheel and deal. <laughs> at Tiffany's and I told the person we literally, don't do deals literally my exact words were this I said literally exactly what I said how embarrassing I said I'll take that one but I'll take that price out the door <laughs> it's like out the door yeah yeah that yeah, sticker price yeah, yeah. out the door no taxes yeah, no tax it's like I'm sorry sir this is Tiffany's we don't no process yeah fees. we don't we don't yeah, do yeah, anything like you. that I'm like all right and I got up to walk out expecting them to stop me and they didn't so I just walked out and I remember I sat in the parking lot for like 40 minutes like I gotta They're go back in there, hella embarrassed. <laughs> you go buy this ring. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. Yeah, fine. I, thought, <laughs> I told my I friend thought about it. I told my friend that she was she she knows jewelry, and she's like, "You tried to do what at Tiffany?" She's like, "You're stupid. <laughs> go back in there." Like, oh man, I gotta go back in there. I mean, there's something to be said about that as a as a Quality. brand when you've built that type of a reputation. That's right. When you have that kind of a reputation that you don't need to do sales, you don't need to do discounts. There is such a high demand. Viore so they did such a great job for themselves. Yeah, yeah. such a great job so. since day one, dude. Yeah. Yeah, su day one. yeah, yeah, super true, super Very true. Cool. Anyway, oh, the other thing I was going to tell you too is, um, y have you used? Well, your son's a little older now, but when he was younger, did you ever use puppets to communicate to him? Yeah, I built it. Have you ever seen my uh, homemade little uh, stage pu puppet stage? No. Yeah, you can get online. This is if your son's into this right now. This is he'll die if you do this. It's awesome. Literally, you can make a really cool puppet stage out of a cardboard box. I, I found it. I found this uh, mm -hmm. on the internet. It's like I'll look for it because I know I've got it somewhere. Um, and I made it out of car. All I needed was a cardboard box, some clothes pins, and some yarn. And you make a like, with a curtain with the whole. Oh, that's great! Yeah, yeah. I spray painted the whole thing, put his name on it. You don't remember this? No. I did, yeah, yeah. I the only downfall of it. I mean, I didn't invest a lot of money, just a lot of time the day I built it. But uh, we only we only did it a few times, and then he was kind of over it. Oh, there it is. Uh, do it yourself, shadow puppet theater, kind of like that one, but better. Yeah. So my so my it's my daughter that loves it. My two year old loves it, and will do anything if the puppet says it. Now, if we say it, she won't do it. But if we're like clean your room, you know, go, go pick uh, up your yeah. toys, she's like ah, uh, she'll do I mean, everything. Mister uh, Rogers like, nailed that. So yeah. and she's like annoying with it because all she wants is the puppet, puppet mama, puppet mama, sure, you know, whatever. So Jessica was doing the puppet with them, and the kids were all over her. It was one of those days where they just want mom. They just want mom. There's nothing I could do. I'm trying to take them. No, I just want mama. So she's getting overwhelmed. They're jumping on her. My my two year old's all over her. She's using the puppet. So my, my wife is talking through the puppet and starts to yell at the kids through the puppet. <laughs> I can't. I'm overwhelmed right now. I'm in the background <laughs> using the puppet to yell at the kids. <laughs> Go hang out with your father. It was so funny. Yeah. Oh, anyway, shit, did dude. you guys see the critique of? Uh, I gotta bring this up. Oh, I'm so glad you bring the RFK one. Yeah. I wanted to hear what the critique so is. Stupid. What? Are you talking about the McDonald's thing? No, dude. This uh, is this is uh, how dumb. It's... This is why people don't trust the media. This is an example of why. So he. This is in the New York Times. Okay, and it's so funny in their article, they make themselves look stupid. They literally make themselves look dumb and give credence to RFK. Here's what it says. This is the New York Times. Ready? Okay. Mr. Kennedy has singled out Fruit Loops as oh, an example yes. of a product with too many artificial ingredients, questioning why the Canadian version has fewer than the U.S. version, but he was wrong. The ingredient list is roughly the same, although Canada's has natural colorings made from blueberries and carrots, while the U.S. product contains red dye 50, yellow dye 5, and <laughs> that's blue the exact one, problem. as well as um, butylated hydroxy to whatever, <laughs> BHT, a lab-made chemical that is used for freshness. Of course, are, are they? Do they not read their own shit? No. Are, how stupid no, are you? They just want to be out with something. They, you know what? I think it's because maybe people are going to read just the first sentence and not realize the rest or whatever. It's like misinformation. Yeah, yeah. Total yeah. misinformation. Roughly the, roughly the same. Yeah. Well, By the way, I'm excited does. about him. He's like the first politician that understands health. Yeah. yeah or, I mean, or even at least cares. He understands it better than any of the politicians. So officially, who's been signed in? RFK? No one. No one. Yeah, this is just who well, they're he's going a, to. He's a, uh, appointed. Yeah, anyway. he appointed. Oh, yeah, he's appointed. So he's appointed RFK, officially appointed yeah. RFK, officially appointed Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Officially appointed. Vivek. Did he officially appoint Vivek? No. Well, Vivek and, and Elon are running yeah. Doge. 
the oh, Department shit. of uh, what is it? Government efficiency. Oh, yeah. Is that is that been official? That's what they announced. And then what is Ron Paul supposed to do? I don't know. I don't uh, know. Nothing yeah, yet. I, I don't know if they've yeah. actually appointed him yet, but they've alluded to him helping with Doge. Yeah. Did you see uh, what was her name? Senator Warren. Uh, where she tried to make fun of uh the Doge. Yeah. Yes, she got her. She's so again. She's she said, stupid. Yeah, like, she's like, oh, off to a good start. Oh, off to a good start with government efficiency, appointing two people for the price of one, you know, for for one, and then Elon retweeted and goes, "We're actually doing this for free." Yeah, so it's actually really so it's very efficient. cost effective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. That she tried to make a point and made herself yeah. look dumb. Yeah, yeah. that looks that looks bad. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, oh, dude. Right. Hey, you, uh, shout out, huh? Uh, oh, Chokey. Yeah, yeah. Did you see? Uh, Chokey yes. on our team. Armbar. Yeah, favorite arm Chokey. We got a clip of her doing jujitsu and kicking ass. I want to see the clip. Can you can you post a clip up? I want to. Uh, this was a, a blue belt competition. Yeah, it was. You, but you see that? She did take that. I mean, our staff is pretty badass when you think about it. I know. Yeah, we get some. Yeah. What do we? It's great. It's great. Let me see if I can send it to Doug. Doug will share it. What is her Instagram handle? So she won oh, by armbar. She won by armbar. Yeah. So she got second in the tournament. Um, but this is at the U.S. Open. That's a big tournament. U.S. Open is no joke. So it's awesome. uh, her Instagram is c dot. What is it? C dot v, v a l l l e three l's. There three you go. L's. Yeah. And she's uh, she handles our social media. So she's awesome. Cold water therapy. It's great for your skin, your immunity, recovery, inflammation. There's a company called Plunge. That makes the best ones in the world. By the way, Plunge also makes saunas. So you got hot and cold therapy saunas. Also, lots of health benefits. Anyway, their Black Friday sale starts right now. 15% off. 15% off. This is the biggest sale of the year. Go check them out. Go to plunge.com to get that discount. All right, here comes the show. All right, our first caller is Allison from Texas. Hi, Allison. Hey, it's great to be here. It's... uh. I never thought I've always been a longtime listener, and I've never thought before that I'd actually get my question answered by you guys. So All it's right. great to be here, and thanks so much. You got it. How can we help you? Okay, I'm going to just jump into my question. You can probably see I'm in a storage class, uh, closet right now. I'm a <laughs> teacher, so I'm in between classes, so I'll try to make this efficient. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> the title of my uh, question is, should I ditch my trainer? Um, <laughs> I'm a self-described fitness fanatic. Ever since losing 100 plus pounds in high school, fitness has always been a big part of my life. In my mid-20s, I discovered a passion for lifting after a trainer at a Gold's Gym said I would never get the physique I wanted by doing hours of cardio. Since then, I've competed at powerlifting meets, done CrossFit, and now in my late 30s, post-COVID, I hired a trainer and currently work out at a gym that follows the conjugate tactical training method. For two years, I've been training six days a week, one heavy lower conditioning day, one heavy upper, a recovery cardio day, one dynamic lower, and one dynamic upper. On top of this, I get 10 to 12,000 steps a day. For the first year, I hit some lifetime PRs. I hit a 250-pound squat, a 315-pound deadlift, wow, a 145-pound bench. And for reference, I'm a 5'2 female, and I hover around 130 pounds. Wow. You um, are strong. I also eat around 1,900 <laughs> to 2,300 calories a day. Uh, yet recently, I'm having a lot of trouble recovering. No energy. My period has been MIA. My thyroid has tanked and I have very low iron and I'm having trouble leaning out and I've lost a lot of strength in the gym. And most importantly, my motivation for lifting has started to wane. After listening to y'all for months and working through a NASM PT certification, I began to think that maybe I'm severely overtraining. I've since scaled down training to four times a week, just lifting. If I'm overtrained, I'm pissed that my trainer hasn't flagged this. I've mentioned my symptoms to him multiple times. Um, I'm conflicted whether I should dump him and find a new gym because I have hit some amazing PRs, but physically I just feel like shit. 
Um, and I also work some other side questions. Are women more <clears throat> prone to overtraining than men? Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts on the conjugate tactical training method? What are, so a lot there. What <laughs> great question. First yeah. of all, you are yeah, you're very strong. Yeah, yeah. Very strong. Impressive. <clears throat> when you say you've hit some PRs, are, those are not recent, right? That was before when you felt good? <clears throat> uh, this was probably about a year and a half ago. Okay. So yes. Okay. Now is in this trainer sounds like they are more of a powerlifting trainer than let's say your average like fitness trainer. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So they're they they they're applying their knowledge, which is powerlifting, uh and powerlifting style training. And you know, conjugates a great method. Mm -hmm. It is high volume. And you know the the attitude around you know, this style of training, they typically don't, it's it's like work through mm -hmm. overtraining, work through, it's very performance based. That being said, if your performance is declining, uh, then you do need to look at your, your programming and see what's going on. Now, sometimes what happens with uh, this, this type of trainer is when this starts to happen, they start to look at other places. Well, what are your supplements? What's your diet? What's your, yeah, and they yeah. tend to not look exactly at- Exactly happened. Yes. Yeah. Right, right. So they tend to not look at the at the programming because they get so ingrained in, no, this is the method. This is what works yeah. well. And it is a good method. It is good programming. It is. You can't live in it, though. Yeah, and it's very hard to live in, uh, especially if, well, you're, if you have a normal life. Well, and especially once you start reaching the numbers she's reaching. That's yes, right. I yes. mean, you you have, you have built a, a super fast car, and you, you're running on the red line and taking corners, and you have been for – the last year and it's now it's the tires are wearing down that it's starting you're starting to feel all this stuff and you need to take care of it you need to switch the training yep. uh, to address all that and so i don't think it's necessarily something like your trainer did bad or not good it's just that you've now reached a point reaping a lot of if not most of the benefits you're going to get from that style of training and mm -hmm. your body's telling you it's time for us to do something that's more functional more, more restorative yeah more restorative more mobility focused and moving in that direction totally. for at least a period of time totally now uh, are you supplementing with the iron have you looked at your thyroid and started working on that like tell me about those things <laughs> Yeah, I actually ended up getting iron infusions because my iron was so low that I had to go get that done. And I'm also on different thyroid medications as well to like bring that up. Okay. Um, so I, I am in treatment, but symptomatically, I just still feel so fatigued. Yeah. yeah. And then is your, um, uh, is your period more regular now yeah. yet or is that still irregular? No, it's still like just... You know, part of me is like, oh, am I in perimenopause or is it my training that's causing it? So I'm not sure. It's still, it's still, you know, irregular. Yeah. So, okay. So I would say a whole week off and then moving. Not just something. that. Like, yeah. I mean, here's the other thing to consider. Even people who train like powerlifters for a long, long time, they start to run into problems like joint issues, dysfunction, because it's so performance focused and there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with being focused on performance until you need to change you need to change direction so i know lots of power lifters very very smart very very knowledgeable yeah. and they, they have all these issues these nagging issues because they just always stay yeah. uh in that space so what you need to do is definitely take some time off i would take a week off and okay. then i'd get into unilateral training i'd work on mobility and i would do that for a while symmetry yeah. performance and symmetry are the programs you need to follow uh and either one is fine to go. Like I, I, I don't have a, a dog in this fight. I think symmetry because first. you probably yeah. do such bilateral. Okay, so first. symmetry, symmetry first, and then move over to performance. That's, yeah, that's the next six months for you. Yeah, and if you did work with another trainer, uh, the the kind of trainer I would look uh, for would be one that is more functional mobility Actually, kind of focus. If you are the type of person who does that and you like investing in trainers to help guide your journey, that would be an awesome idea. Is to actually okay. go go find the the mobility guru guy. You know, the, the guy okay. with the long hair and he's wearing barefoot <laughs> shoes. Go find that guy yeah. and have him he's teach probably crawling teach, right now. teach me your ways for a while uh, because it would do you really good. And It'll it, be very different from what yeah, you're used and to. And it's not saying that that is necessarily better. It's better for you at this current state that you're on. You have yeah. re let me tell you, you kicked ass training yeah. this way 
And it's and and I I also want to like summited. I don't want to sure. shit on this trainer at all because they've done a really good job getting you here. Like as far as performance is like, but this is what makes a complete trainer is the ability to teach someone like you this. And yeah. then when these start issues start coming up, oh, I know where we need yeah. to go. We now need to pivot just, in this direction. And just to defend your trainer a little bit, if you went with a really good general trainer, they wouldn't be able to train you as well as this trainer did with powerlifting. This, it sounds like this trainer is very well versed with powerlifting programming, which is great until it's no longer great for you. Until you get so strong. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, you know, and you start to develop some issues, you know. Um, and that's just true for all specialized trainers. So mm -hmm. I definitely think it would be a good idea to place some focus on functional, mobility style training um, and, and kind of fall in love with that for a little while. It's going to feel very different. You're not going to be hitting these PRs and stuff like that. But you'll start to feel better for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to hear because I just love ripping a bar off yeah. the ground. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I just love sort of that grind. So, yeah. like, part of me is like disappointed to hear this, but I the older part of me knows that if I want to be in this for the long term, I do need to make a shift. That's right. And yeah. yes. Like, and I guess that's why I. Wrote this question knowing in that I'm probably going to get advice like this, but yeah. Yeah. it's just like, oh no, it's like addictive. Like it's hard to sort of give up that. You're pushing to the choir. Yeah. yeah. If you if you look yeah. at this like you've been training for a sport, which in in a sense you have, and you've reached this pinnacle of, of your abilities in terms of this sport of like just lifting the most, uh, and now you got to go through that period off season. You really got to rebuild the body up, you know, to reinforce everything when, and allow it to recover. When it comes to strength, we've said this before, like that is the best objective metric. However, at some point you start to get uh, diminishing returns, right? So if I added, if I got you to deadlift 345 pounds, right? You had 30 pounds to your deadlift. The, the results you would get from that would not be the same like you did when you got from 145 to 200 or something like that. So at some point you start to get diminishing returns, injury and overtraining and stuff like that starts to become more of an issue. Now, the first, when you get started, like just get strong, mm -hmm. but you got so strong. I don't know if you're going to get tons of benefit from adding 20 or 30 pounds to your lifts. I don't think you're going to notice that much of a, a difference in terms of progress. But I do know if you start to focus on mobility, function, unilateral training, balance, you know, that kind of stuff, exercises you're not, you know, maybe familiar with, that you'll see a lot of benefit. You'll get those newbie gains again. Yeah, part of me is like, oh my God, like that's some Pilates shit, but you know, I know you guys are right. <laughs> no, no, too far. <laughs> yeah, too far, too no, far. Not too that far. far. No, no, no. Just go, just, not Pilates. <laughs> just go find the hippie in the barefoot shoes and then and go hire him for like three months. You'll be all right. If you don't follow our program, that's the way to go. If you- And like if- it, and. <laughs> So if it was your program, you would recommend Symmetry. Symmetry. Um, then is that what? Yeah. I'll send that to you. We'll send yeah, Symmetry yeah. over to you. And then the follow-up, because I still think you need longer than just one cycle of this. For sure. Three, uh, I would go that and then into performance. And then yeah. you could probably revisit some more of this. You're, you've been working yeah. out for a while. You probably on your own have good exercise technique and, and understanding of, of uh, you know what you're doing. So you could probably just do it on your own. Uh, I mean, always working okay. with a trainer is always better but you're probably fine on your own with your experience. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I feel conflicted, but I am going to follow through because just change sometimes is good, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm in it for the long, the, the long haul. And I really appreciate y'all's feedback on my questions. Yeah, Allison, I would you know, love to hear back mm -hmm. from you. Totally. I, yeah, I'd love to hear back yeah. from you as you go through this. Yeah, your body feels. I, I think this you'll change. be happy. I know. I know. Initially, it's it's hard to kind of swallow that pill, but I think you knew deep down that was the way you needed to go. Anyways, just probably need to hear it again from us, and it's going to serve you, and you'll you'll be able to go back to heavy lifting again at yep. one point. But really, what you what you're learning right now is you're going to learn the formula of like, okay, this is how I do this because you yeah. can spend most of your time lifting heavy like you like to but you'll you'll need to learn you have how to, to. In, we get undulated yeah in, especially if you want to do this, this for the rest of your life yeah yeah and i do like yeah. i will take your advice and find the patchouli sort of barefoot <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i love it hey what do you, it might be a little bit hard to find in houston texas I just say that. <laughs> what do you uh what do you teach by not the like way? in california yeah yeah i thought maybe you're uh, closer yeah. to austin yeah. i don't know what do you, what do you at. teach <laughs> wearing hemp clothes right now <laughs> what, what do you teach i actually again i teach uh latin and ancient greek oh, oh cool awesome. oh wow That's i just like that you're a, that we have yeah. a jacked teacher yeah that's great <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, my football boys love me. I feel like I get respect for that. Oh, I but. bet you do. I bet you do. Awesome. That's awesome. So a lot of a lot of the bros take Latin at my school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. That's well, awesome, let, awesome. yeah. So let, keep keep in touch. Let us know in about thirty days or so. How's it going? Okay, I definitely will. Thank you so much. I I appreciate y'all's time. You got it. I got to go right. run off to class. All right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You know, what's cool about that is we don't often what get to ass, give, bro. well, we don't get to yeah. often give that advice and, and she's preaching to the choir. Like I all know. of us in this room yeah. have struggled with this. Like I think how long it was like two years ago, I, I was able to pull 605, uh, which was a PR for me and I was super happy about it or whatever. Did I get all these crazy benefits from it? No. It's like at some point you're not going to, you're going to get diminishing <laughs> returns. And if I keep pushing that, all I'm going to do is ask, I'm just asking for trouble. The benefit was coming out and being able to say that right That's now. it. Yeah. That's the, all <laughs> the benefit right there. Is I get to mention it on a podcast every <laughs> yeah, once in a while. Exactly. Uh, so no, at some point getting stronger isn't the goal. It's just not. In the beginning, it for sure is. But after a while, yeah. There's a lot of, especially if you want to do this forever. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad we also took the position because I didn't I didn't want to turn this into like hammering this trainer. This trainer no. did a very good job. I think they're a good power to think Yes, I did, I did, the trainer did Conjugate a- Conjugate method's legit. Yeah. yeah. Trainer and getting her very, to lift that much? Yeah, if you, it, let me tell you, like that would, that would be the absolute worst thing is to talk shit about a trainer who got a chick to be deadlifting 350 pounds, 15 pounds and squatting 250. Yeah. Like, you can't get, you can't do that with- That's a massive- Shitty feat. programming no. and not knowing what no, you're doing. No, you know powerlifting. Yes. For and, sure. But what, you know, where she's at now she's just it's she just needs to move into that other direction for a little while and then you, we can come back over there but this is so common in the powerlifting world to your point like how many friends do we have that are brilliant, brilliant. really yeah. smart uh, great at powerlifting but then because they've fallen so in love with that style of training they yeah. neglect the things their yeah. body needs yeah. they end up getting all the knee elbow sleeves well look at like, our friend look at our friend Len how many lane how many back problems somebody did a tweet saying yeah. You know, he hit and he he get a new uh, he won a new competition. He hit a new record, which is great. Yeah. And someone's like, "Is it worth the three herniated disc?" And he's like, "Definitely." I'm like, "No, it's not. No, it isn't, bro. In, in it's his, not worth it for him. It is." Hey, in his yeah. defense, he's definitely changed his tune, though. You see, he's doing a lot of mobility he's, stuff now. He's really yeah, strong. And I mean, yeah. and I actually attribute that that win and that PR for him because he but has to understand yeah, he did the therapy work because he's at yeah. least starting to introduce it yes. more. So, but yeah, no, some of our best, smartest friends. Yeah. And I get it because I could fall into that. Yeah, we for all have. sure. We all have. Our next caller is Travis from South Carolina. What's up, man? How you doing, Travis? How's it going? What's up, man? What's up? Great. How are you guys? Good. We're doing good, dude. How can we help you? Yeah. Uh, well, first off, thank you all so much. I mean, been listening to you all for about three years now. Um, work for State and Liberty, which yeah. you all work with. And so, oh, yeah, I mean, once, yeah, once they connected... You guys, that's actually how I got on to listening. So awesome! That's Love great. It. We were all just wondering why why you look so good. Yeah, <laughs> what a sharp guy. Oh yeah, State and Liberty man. Shout, Shout, out, to, yeah. Shout out to State and Liberty. We're wearing their t shirt. Yeah. How can we help you, dude? Yeah. So my question is, so a little bit about me. I'm 30 years old. Been active my whole life with sports, soccer, tennis, in college. I uh, have always been pretty skinny. Uh, while I was in college, I started hitting the gym with friends to gain muscle, was lifting about three to five days a week and not seeing much improvement. And that lasted over three years. Uh, moving forward to now, I'm married. I work about 40 hours a week as a manager uh, and then wanting to build muscle again. But then I also walk about seven to 10 miles a day uh, with the position. Uh, my wife also wants me to lift with her in the morning, but when I try lifting heavy on exercises such as squats, deadlifts, and hip thrusts, I get lightheaded or pass out. This doesn't happen if I lift in the evening, though. Wondering what your thoughts are on that. Okay, so two reasons why this can happen. Uh, one is either blood sugar mm -hmm. or two is blood pressure. Have you had either one of those tested? Not really. Okay. <laughs> I would test both. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's the deal. If it's blood sugar, then consuming some food 30 minutes yeah. to an hour before. Closer. Yeah, before. Because I'm, I'm assuming you're lifting fasted in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably blood sugar if this doesn't happen to you in the evening. So I would eat something about 30 to 40 minutes before. Liquid, maybe an shake, hour before. liquid shake would be great, right? Yeah, now. like protein and carbs. You want to have both protein and carbs. And uh, that should help. If it's blood uh, pressure, 
because sometimes what can happen with an exercise, especially a heavy one, mm -hmm. is when you are straining, you, you cause a temporary rise in blood pressure. And some people get this rebound low blood pressure right afterwards. They're vagal. Yeah. yeah, so they'll do a deadlift and then they'll put the weight down. All of a sudden they'll get lightheaded. Um, and so if, if that's the case, when you put the weight down, keep your muscles tense. But don't just relax your muscles. Keep everything tense. That'll keep your blood pressure higher and then slowly release them. And that should take care Especially of it. Especially in your legs, yeah. yeah. But one thing you could do with the blood sugar one is you could get a real inexpensive uh, blood sugar test uh, kit at the like your local pharmacy or whatever. And just, you know, when you're working out, test it and see where your blood sugar's at. But it, it sounds like that because in the evening it doesn't happen. So you just literally eat an hour before, you're probably going to be okay. Okay. That's okay. it. That's it, my friend. What about, what about, I'm yeah. curious, like the programming and stuff like that, because maybe you think, uh, like, what are you following right now, program wise? Are you following any MAPS programs right now? Yeah, I have Anabolic and I have MAPS 15. Oh, okay, good. You have MAPS 15 oh, already. Because that, just because of your hours and how busy you are, if you start to feel like uh, the volume is too much and anabolic, MAPS 15 may be a great program for you to toggle back and forth with yeah. the effect you have that already. That was generally you know. speaking, how is your diet, generally speaking? Are you keto, low carb? Uh, not really. Okay, I'm good. just, I eat about three meals a day, a little bit of snack in here and there, but not really counting carbs or okay. calories or anything like that right now. Mm -hmm. Um, could definitely get in more into that. You know, I used to have this like, just I, track the protein for right now. Yeah. I used to have clients like this where when I train them in the morning, uh, they'd get dizzy Yeah, and the go-to meal that used to work really well. And I don't, I think I don't, there's no science behind this. It's just convenience was a banana and peanut butter mm. when, I, I, because it was easy because the problem with them is like, Oh, I got to eat an hour before that means I got to wake up at, you know, whatever early. So what they would do is they'd say, you know what, have a banana with some peanut butter on the way here. And that's, that fixed it. It Oat, almost always fixed it. Oatmeal or shake was my go-to for those people. I'm, mm. I can be like this. I can actually get lightheaded and stuff like that. That's why I don't like lifting fasted. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I've been, I've been lightheaded from it before. Mm. And just having a, a quick liquid shake 30 minutes before, or even like, you know, uh, you know, creatures of habits, oatmeal, because that's real easy. Just pour some hot water on it and I can, I can shuttle that in really quick. Mm. Those things make a, make a big difference. Yeah. But I, I tell you what, Travis, as far as results go, if you want to see an increase in your results, probably the single best thing that you can do aside from the stuff that we've communicated right now is just track protein, bro. And just if you're because if you're only eating three three meals a day there's a good chance that you're not eating enough you're protein. not eating enough protein on a regular basis and that is going to be all all the difference in you seeing more results is because you're doing a good job if you're following one of the mass programs you got the best yeah. the ones i would have recommended anyways to you the next best thing that you could potentially do is make sure you consistently hit that protein intake and don't worry everything else not really worried about yet just focus on Tra that and it'll make a difference travis can we send you a free program yeah, I would love to. You want you, any of them in particular you're interested in? Uh, I mean, I've been, so I have a friend that's, I've been working out with him in the evenings. Um, now he does more of a five days a week on hitting certain target so groups. Split. You want to have I know anabolic is more two or three days a week, but. Yeah, I'll send you a map split. This is a, a bodybuilder split program. Awesome. Thank you so much. You got it, my friend. Thanks for calling in, brother. No, thank you guys. Keep doing it. I mean, I love listening to you guys, especially I live down here in Charleston and I mean, it's a long commute in some days. So I love hearing you guys and just chatting about family and definitely around the corner to having a kid myself. So oh, I just love okay. hearing it. That's Good for awesome. you, man. Yeah. Congrats. God bless. Congratulations. Yep. Appreciate the support, Travis. All right. You, so you get lightheaded, huh? Yeah. Is it worse? It's not always. It's just, it's happened before. Is it worse when you're on your period or is it less? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, so, I had to Quick shake or oatmeal has been yeah, like, no, go, no, it's, it's go got, to. It's, it's blood sugar. Yeah. If he, if he was like this in the evening as well, then it would it, I would have thought it would have been blood sugar. I, I do hope though he, he, uh, <laughs> he takes heed to the advice because if you don't track protein, uh, I, you, even the best programming in the world, it's hard to make really good progress. Like you, that is the, is the key ingredient yeah. to making yep. sure that the work that you do in the gym, you see the results from that. And I can't stress enough how, how many clients that 
I've had to fix that, and that's almost always uh, an issue for people that especially just three meals. Yes, yeah. and that's that was why it was a, a for sure giveaway because cram it in. It's like I mean, are you eating you know fifty? Unless he's one hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, are you eating fifty, sixty pound or sixty gram meals? Most likely not. No, you know, most likely not. It's early access to Black Friday. All maps programs, all bundles, sixty percent off. Also. If you get a bundle, you'll get 10 entries to win. If you buy a program, you'll get five entries to win. Everything else, one entry to win. Five days at the Mind Pump House in Park City. It's got a gym. It's got a cold dip. It's got a sauna. It's got red light therapy. It's all kinds of great stuff. Five-day vacation hooked up with $1,000 for travel accommodations as well. Early access, Black Friday. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Black Friday. For the 60% off and the entries to win uh, a vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Melody from Illinois. Hi, Melody. Hi, Melody. How Hello. can we help you? Hey, guys. This is very surreal. So thank you. Honestly, feeling very honored for having the time to chat with you guys today. Um, and before I get into my question, just want to say a quick thank you. Coming from a newer coach in the industry, um, especially just listening to you guys over the years, um, your camaraderie and like your vulnerability that you continue to share has really helped trainers like me who are a little bit more on the, the quiet side who get stuck in imposter syndrome um, and has really helped me to kind of lean into more confidence as a coach. So thank you. Wow, thank Love, you for that. Great. Love hearing that. Yeah, how can we help you? Yeah, so... I'll get into my question. I'll just read what I had, but I do have updates. I submitted it um, back in July, actually. And it was a question about getting into Muscle Mommy, which I ac actually am about two weeks just after completion of it. So um, I will kind of give you the question that I posed and a little bit of an update. Okay. Um, so the question was, can I be a Muscle Mommy? Short answer, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, I've been strength training consistently for just over 10 years. It is truly my passion. Uh, my day job is a marketing manager at a power tool company, but I am also a certified pre and postnatal coach, which means I have um, an extra emphasis on uh, pelvic floor support. Um, I'm about one month away, or actually, sorry, back when I was writing this, I was one month away, but I am officially a certified breathwork facilitator as well. Um, I love coaching others and realizing, um, helping them realize their true potential with strength and connecting on a deeper level within their body through breath and meditation. Um, I've been through different ebbs and flows of different training modalities throughout the years, uh, but it has always been very focused in strength building a foundation of muscle and performance um, based strength as a teenager has been an immense blessing to uh, as a girl who has become an example of a woman who can stay strong, even with a mostly sedentary job in the corporate world. Um, in 2018, I got bulging discs in my lower back and refused to go through any surgeries or get any types of like cortisol injections, anything like that. Um, I was determined to getting back into lifting even after multiple doctors told me that I'd never lift heavy again because of their lack of strength knowledge. Um, and ultimately, I did um, recover fully. Um, this injury truly was a blessing in disguise because it did open up the world of mobility and spirituality to me in a way that I never knew was possible before. This was essentially the genesis of my journey to becoming a certified pre-postnatal coach and leaning into breathwork. Um, I've been listening to your guys' podcasts over the years, and I'm so grateful for your incredible leadership and knowledge in this space. Um, I've worked through Prime and Prime Pro and have loved how much strength I've been able to gain back and start feeling comfortable to become an advanced lifter again, especially after those years of rehab um, from the bulging discs. I have had um, to scale back a lot on my heavier lifts due to managing overall life stressors um, with the corporate job and balancing everything. Um, I did complete MAPS Anywhere a few years ago when I was traveling more for work, and it was really incredible how I was able to still maintain uh, my physique and overall strength with minimal equipment. So thank you for that program. That was awesome. Um, outside of that, I've just been in maintenance. Before Muscle Mommy, I was in maintenance mode um, with dumbbell work and bands. I typically would get one heavy deadlift session a week, but focused more so on mobility most other days. 
Um, I really missed being able to incorporate foundational lifts back into my routine and felt really strong. So I purchased Muscle Mommy. Um, I'll kind of skip over the next part because that was my main concern. I had a kind of nerve related um, lat pain that um, wouldn't go away no matter what I did. I did lat pullovers. Um, it really was exacerbated with pull-ups specifically. Um, rose a little bit, but it was more so like the pull-up motion. Um, and that's kind of what made me hesitate on starting Muscle Mommy because I didn't know if it was going to make the issue worse or if there was something that I should have been looking into. But during that time, I actually um, did things like uh, acupuncture, mobility, of course, um, and Muscle Mommy, which now I am really not feeling that pain anymore. So I think it was just probably some weaknesses in surrounding muscles. Um, so I don't know exactly what caused it, but it is in a much better place. Um, I will say now as an update, I feel a lot stronger when I start the from when I started. I hadn't done barbell work in years prior to doing that program just because of um, the bulging disc, disc issue as well as having some limited um, uh, equipment at my house, which is where I primarily work out. Um, right before I purchased Muscle Mommy, I actually finally got a squat rack for my house. So it just happened to be perfect timing to start the program. And so I was like, I just, I have to do it. Um, if the pain gets worse, then I'll back off, but it didn't. So um, strength gains definitely happened. Um, yeah, feeling really great. And now kind of in this two week period of deciding um, what to do next, I don't know if something like an anabolic would make more sense or like a MAPS 15 um, or kind of just going back into what I was doing prior, which was good for maintenance. It was more so just mobility and like one day of heavy lifting. So good open to questions. Symmetry. Great fit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. symmetry is the way to go. Yeah. I like symmetry for you. And, you know, so you it was nerve pain you felt. Mm. It, so it felt pretty nervy, kind of radiating or burning, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So one thing I didn't mention here, um, I had, well, I still currently am, I have a, it's, it's tough to give it a name of what it actually is, but it's called trichotillomania, which is a compulsive hair pulling disorder. Um, it's not very well known because a lot of people who have it are embarrassed to talk about it. Um, but essentially it's kind of in the same vein as like nail picking. Um, it's a body focused, repetitive behavior essentially, um, which is really unfortunate for people like me that really want to focus on strength, but are caught in kind of like these compulsive behaviors yeah. that, um, keep your arm, I guess, in this case, in like a, a bad position for a long time. So I think that's what was exacerbating a lot of the nerve pain. Hmm. Uh, but with e -stim and acupuncture, that definitely Great. supported. I'm so glad you said that. So mm -hmm. uh, nerve pain in the mid back uh, lat or whatever, oftentimes can come from the spine. And so, and sometimes the cervical spine. So I'm wondering the positioning of your head or neck during that, that position with the scapula in a certain position. So, um, and it caused some kind of nerve impingement. So I'm so glad you said that. I think for someone like you, especially with the bulging discs and what you just said, some form of fascial um, traction mm -hmm. would be a good idea. Are you familiar with LDOA? LDOA yes. I, I have heard you guys talk about it. I also have um, Tune Up Fitness, like myofascia balls that have been really supportive. Awesome. So, okay. So if you go on our, our um, Mind Pump uh, Fitness channel, TV, yeah. Mind Pump TV. Pump TV, we have some videos on LDOA. Uh, now you seem very educated. Uh, I think an LDOA certification would be something you would probably love. But essentially it is doing traction. So you know what yeah. traction is, right? Where you kind of... Creating disc space. Kind of unwinds the, the fascial lines. But you're lines. using the fascial lines to do so. And it's not using, it's not myofascial release or anything like that. It's literally using, creating tension along the fascial lines to create some kind of traction. Someone like you would benefit greatly. And from it would complement the, the type of clientele you are targeting. I was just going to say that yeah. for the kind of people that you're working with, it would be very valuable certification course. Nonetheless, yeah. we have, I think, like three or four videos. Uh, where you learn some of the techniques of Eldo. And so you could try them out and see how they help you. But I, I've seen, I've had a lot of success using them on my wife. Yeah. 
Um, because she has a herniated Anybody disc. With back issues. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I think that would be very valuable for someone like you. And then symmetry would be great. It's unilateral based, although the la the back half of it is five by five, so get back to the barbell. Uh, but I think you would really like it um, and how it kind of balances out uh, muscle mommy. So tell me about muscle mommy. You got a lot stronger at the end. You, you've got great results from it. You feel good? Yeah, I feel so good. Um, so happy to be back under the barbell. Yeah. Um, I didn't do the best like pre post kind of tracking. I'm definitely not. I used to be very hardcore with like all the food tracking, but have kind of come away from that. So I didn't like go into all the details of body fat percentage and all the things before and after. But um, weight wise, I think I was around 136, 138 to start. Felt strong already, felt pretty lean, um, but just hadn't like put a lot of um, weight on my back for a while. So um, the newbie gains were ready to come back. And um, the first time I think I got into five by fives, I started with 165 and I could only get like two reps. Um, the second week I did it, I think I was like five reps wow. comfortably. Wow. And so I, like the strength is definitely still there and I'm like eager to get it back, but also very aware of kind of balancing stress and things. So it's kind of a tough mind pull because I used to be super meathead wanting to like just lift as much as I can. And now I know the, um, well, the with, cause of kind of pushing with, it too hard. With your background as a coach, uh, pre yeah. and postnatal, uh, you know, training, uh, breath work specialist, you're 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 pretty self, uh, well aware of the balance that you need through fitness. So I feel pretty confident uh, having you do any of our programs because I think you're going to be smart. You definitely aren't a meathead anymore because of the certifications and courses and clients you work with. So now you know the value of it. I think you'll really like symmetry. I think your clients are going to like mm -hmm. what you're going to get from symmetry as well because you'll get some stuff that you can apply towards them. And then I'm telling you, you with your education, your background, and what, you're, what you've experienced with your own injuries, uh, look into Eldoa. Find those videos on our channel. Look into it. Uh, I think you're going to really, really like what it does for you. Melody, are you uh, signed up for the free webinar coming up for the trainers? I am. Yep. Oh, good I girl. Am. Good yeah, girl. Yeah, excellent. Make yeah. sure you comment or something so yeah, we can yeah. see you. Excited to see you in there then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very yeah. good. We'll send you symmetry, okay, if you don't have it. Amazing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and, and whatever you do in your hair, it's not. it looks great. So I can't even tell you. <laughs> you look, you get great <laughs> Thank hair, you. So. I've mastered the angles over the years, yeah, so right. it's, <laughs> it's a true talent. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, thank, thank you so much, Melody. Can I give you guys um, one tip for a random thing, of a protein snack that I think you guys will really like? Yeah. Let's hear it. Ooh. So I don't know. You haven't talked about it yet, but I can't imagine you haven't discovered this already. But if you haven't, um, mixing the chocolate, any type of chocolate flavor element with um, Paleo Valley chocolate, like two scoops or something as a hot chocolate is like oh, the most amazing drink oh, interesting. and snack. Oh, that's not bad at all. I'll try that. Yeah, I'll try that because I'm actually not a fan of the chocolate element, but like that, like that might be really. That good. That might be delicious. I love hot chocolates. So. Yeah, I've had a yeah. lot of friends that are like really weary on the chocolate flavor. I'm like, just trust me, this makes it so much better. <laughs> Interesting. So. Ooh, I'm gonna do that. I love yeah. the idea. I'll definitely try. It's perfect timing, right? Winter coming around. I like yep, that. Yep. I like it. Thank you. Yep. All right. Awesome, Melody. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, that uh, that traction type of uh, of training for people is so beneficial. Yeah, traction is beneficial uh, at alleviating a lot of nerve pain. Uh -huh. But the problem with most traction is it's passive. Exactly. Yeah, you're going to hang upside down. You're going to do all these other mm -hmm. things to try and achieve that. But yeah, the Eldo, it's it's very active, and they teach you how to really kind of. Uh, tense up those muscles to support you better. Yeah, Maybe yeah. we should have, you know, we haven't done that in a long time and that there is so much value in that. I know we only did like two or three videos. Maybe we have like a an Eldoa person series come in and actually do like yeah. the top 10 like moves or That's something. That's a great like. idea. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it is really we'll get on that. I think that'd be really yeah, cool be for super, the coaches. Or yeah, at least in the coaches yeah, stuff. The Maybe coaches. we at least do it in the coaches program so they have that because that for them is I think super valuable. Absolutely. So, great idea. Our next caller is Alicia from Canada. Hi, Alicia. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? How can we help you? Very well, thanks. Uh, first, thank you so much. Um, been listening for a little over a year, and it, it, the information you guys provide is fantastic. So I really, really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. Thank you. Um, 
<clears throat> I'll go over my history first. Uh, things have changed a little bit since I sent in my question in July, but it's it's still pretty consistent. Um, so I've been listening heavily for years now. For the past, I've really been building a reverse diet, reboot my metabolism with the advice that you guys give. Uh, like what most women, I have had some crazy diets, um, really sorted that out. So my protein intake is great. Usually I'm sitting around 135 grams in terms of calories. I was up to 2,400. I have recently dropped down to 2,000 because um, I've been working with a trainer and that's what he suggested. Um, I have finished anabolic and I, at the time, was three weeks into performance. However, I have now finished it and I was planning on starting aesthetic next, uh, which kind of goes into my question. So how do I get my shoulders and back to actually fill out? I know most girlies complain they want uh, the booty, but that's never been a problem. I really want that definition, either the shoulder caps, uh, being able to see into my back. And no matter what I do, I just cannot kind of build in there. I feel like even with my lifts, I'm getting some increases, but I'm just not seeing a lot of the improvement. Um, and it's really been a goal of mine to get that definition. So, yeah. Good question. All right. Well, you have aesthetic. Uh, the focus sessions is where you can place a focus on specific body parts. So when you're following aesthetic, pick shoulders and back, um, and then do the right exercises, the ones that we recommend on your focus sessions, and that'll give you extra volume to train on those areas. As far as definition is concerned, that's that, that's a leanness issue typically, right? So getting them bigger, that'll help. Getting leaner tends to show the uh, the definition. But yeah, you got the right program. MAPS Aesthetic is, is literally designed for you to be able to focus on, that's why they're called focus sessions, on uh, target body parts it's, so you'll be able to put more volume there it's really going to come down to continuing to reverse diet and increase your calories because you do need you do need more if we're going to build muscle we need a, a calorie surplus and if you're hovering around maintenance or even sometimes a deficit it's going to be really tough to build and so just being comfortable with going on a nice reverse diet slash bulk for a little while and then when you see strength go up you've ran through the program then after that then we can go on a cut and then hopefully if we've done a good job we've got your calories up to 26 2800 calories and then, they, uh, and then you come back down and then you peel down and then you reveal all the hard work that you did on them shoulders uh during maps aesthetic so that would be the formula because you got the programming down and then you said it already but i would just continue to emphasize like consistently hitting protein consistently yeah. hitting that protein intake is so important now alicia if maps aesthetic begins to feel like too much volume because it's a high volume program yeah so if you start to feel over so that that was my go ahead yeah oh i was gonna say that was my other concern i, I work kind of retail management we're going into christmas so mm getting to that like overexertion, over training was why I was kind of holding off on okay. it. Um, Cause I know that it is a big commitment. You know, what might be more appropriate from a volume perspective that also places an emphasis on shoulders and back is muscle mommy. Muscle mommy might be oh, okay. muscle mommy might be more of an appropriate level uh, amount of volume, yeah. but it's also uh, it also specialize or, or it also places emphasis on the shoulders and back mainly because it was a female-oriented program, and women tend to want to develop those areas uh, more than, let's say, their chest, for example. So um, if you want, I can send that to you, Alicia. It's less volume than aesthetic. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Let me send that to you. Yeah, yeah. let's that do would, that. that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that might be more appropriate, because aesthetic is a lot of volume. Yeah, that's a good call. And you know, a lot of people can do it, but if, if you also know you're going into a stressful season, it might not be the best program. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, like I said, I've been with the trainer now about – six weeks and he definitely said like mobility too like i'm i have to really focus on that because i guess repetitive motion at work and, and stuff like that yeah. he, he can see some issues there so mm -hmm. i don't know if that's restricting kind of where my my lifts are as well mm. so it could yeah, yeah. it definitely yeah. could for sure yeah. but yeah let, let me send you mu muscle mommy and i think that program will probably be the one sure. that yeah, yeah. that'll get you there i like that awesome yeah thank you so much perfect thank you so much i really appreciate it you got it <laughs> Well, that was easy. Yeah. 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 Aesthetic is a great program, but it's high volume. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, you do have to be ready for that. You got to be ready, man. You got to have per good, like, okay. So most people, if they follow aesthetic, also need to have perfect sleep, perfect diet, you know, good, you know, history, good recovery. 
Because it's a lot. It's a lot of volume. And if it's too much for you, you're not going to progress, regardless well, of the program. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it's your body yeah, yeah, I was inspired by my, in yeah. the <laughs> competing. Ready to jump on stage. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't handle that right now. No. no. <laughs> All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body